Hello friends, in continuation with the last lecture, today we are going to talk about the corrugated diaphragms. In the last lecture, we talked about the elastic transducers and in that one, we talk about only the diaphragm. Uh, the normal diaphragm is something like a, a small wire and uh, that small wire can be used for the uh, smaller deflection measurements. Now, wherever there is a large amount of the deflections is uh, there then we can use we can't use uh, flat uh, diaphragms so there we um, need to have modify the uh, diaphragm so we can use a type of diaphragm as a corrugated one uh, so uh, because the deflection is quite more than, okay so we use the um, uh, corrugated uh, diaphragm so you can see over here the various types of the diaphragms are represented over here the flat diaphragm that we have seen in the last uh, lecture and then the sort of wave trapezoidal uh, sinusoidal and the uh, toroidal uh, bit, uh, profiles are shown in the different way the different shapes are uh, given to that uh, uh, wire and uh, they are used in the bridge circuit is for, for the measurement of the uh, tensions and the deflections produced and obviously this will be attached to the uh, pressure uh, wherever we want to measure it. So these diaphragms are the uh, different forms such as the sawtooth wave, trapezoidal and the uh, sinusoidal. For the corrugated diaphragms, it is fair now, uh, for the case of the uh, just a diaphragm, there is a uh, linear relationship between the uh, pressure and the deflection or the displacement we can say, y0. P and y0 have the linear pressure. But in this case, we don't have uh, any kind of the definite relationship between the uh, pressure and the deflection, y0. So, uh, they are the very no highly non-linear relationship exists between this and we can't give the some particular the mathematical relation to them so as the diaphragm deflates the strains of the different magnitudes and the signs are generated at the different locations of the diaphragm so at the different locations okay different kind of the strains will be generated and with the different uh, signs means that there will be the positive strain as well as the negative strains can be produced so these strains uh, can also be ma measured by effectively placing the four strain gauges on the diaphragm so we can uh, these uh, different strain gauges can uh, strains can be uh, measured uh, by placing the four uh, strain gauges on the different places of the uh, diaphragm now apart from that corrugated diaphragms so we can have the another type of uh, the bellows bellows is the gundali uh, so it's uh, a uh, bellow is a thin walled cylindrical device uh, with uh, deep convolutions and the sealed at uh, one end okay so the deep convolutions and the sealed at the one end so this is something like okay, these are the convolutions and the uh, one end is sealed one and other one is kept open one okay other one end is kept uh, open one and obviously these are the uh, okay one of the one of them can be kept as a reference one and the others uh, pressures can be changed and because this is attached to the uh, pressures to be measured uh, and sometimes one of them can be considered as a reference one so these are the bellows you can consider you see you can see uh, now the number of convolutions varies from the 5 to 20 depending upon the uh, pressure range uh, the displacement required and the operating pressures <laughs> these are made up of the phosphor bonds beryllium copper stainless steel or the nickel alloys so uh, uh, a pair of the matched bellows can be used to measure the absolute pressure or the differential pressure. Absolute pressure or the differential pressures we can uh, measure. Uh, for that case, we need a matched pair of the uh, bellows. Usually, one uh, one end of the bellow is attached to the transducer case and the other end is uh, kept free to move. So, as already uh, we have seen here and earlier also I said it. So, one of the, uh, one of the end is kept uh, uh, free and the other end is uh, just uh, sealed when the pressure is applied uh, applied to the inside of the bellows uh, it will uh, expand and causing the free end to the move okay so here yeah, the when the pressure is applied then the uh, pressure will go inside the bellows and obviously it expands and causing the free end to oh, move so but when the pressure is applied so this this will expand and the free end will move and so obviously the pointer will deflect on the calibrated scale bar because this will be kept at the reference one and if the pressure increases so this will move on the right hand side and, and the, we can get the information regarding the 
uh, pressure one what is the other one is the differential uh, well uh, gauge differential well gauge we can see over here and it is attached on the uh, see see the bellows are uh, shown over here the pressure connections it is on this side and the gauge movement uh, on the calibrated scale through the pointer one now uh, the movement of the movable end is measured in order to identify the amount of the pressure often then external uh, uh, spring is uh, used opposing the movement of the bellows uh, as a result the really uh, linear relationship can be obtained from the uh, equation and what is that equation that is f is equal to kx actually as we, we have already known about this uh, formula f is equal to kx from the elasticity so our force is just replaced with the pressure into the uh, area so here the a is the area of the bellows and the k is the spring constant and x is the displacement of the uh, bellows the stiffness is directly proportional to the angst modulus of the material and inversely proportional to the uh, outside diameter and the number of convolutions of the uh, bellows. The deflection y of the spring is given by the equation and this equation is very non-linear one. So uh, uh, what you can say that really, uh, this equation is quite uh, difficult to no need to remember it but y is equal to uh, uh, what is this equation y is equal to 2 and a uh, p r x square upon a d q where n is number of convolutions d is the uh, wall thickness e is the angst modulus of the material r x is the average radius of the velo and a is the uh, effect area of the velo and the p is the pressure one so the bellows are generally used for the low pressure measurements and uh, they are uh, very sensitive to the vibrations. In certain applications, bellows can be furnished with a, a restraining spring. So this spring opposes the axial deflection of the uh, bellows. Okay, so uh, we can see here the axial uh, uh, deflections of the bellows can be seen over here. So you can see that this is axis and used here. Thank you.